Something's happening. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most notable sitcom events, both on and off screen, that forever altered the shows. For this list, we're only looking at live action comedies. Back then, there was a galactic federation of planets, which was ruled over by the evil Lord Xenu. Oh. Number 10. Enter Urkel. Family Matters. When this spin-off of the show Perfect Strangers was pitched, it was originally supposed to centre on Harriet Winslow, her Chicago PD officer husband, and their children. A pesky neighbour was barely an afterthought. The epitome of a TV nerd, Steve Urkel was introduced halfway through the first season as Laura Winslow's blind date. I've been crazy about her since the first grade, but she always thought I was some kind of a freak. Go figure! He was expected to be a one-and-done character. Instead, Urkel and his performer, Jalil White, became the breakout stars. You've come between me and the things that I love. <laughs> Works every time. By the second season, White had been upgraded to series regular, and much of the show began revolving around Urkel's antics. This would lead to some conflict between White and his castmates. Now point your fingers up to the sky and talk through your nose way up high. Spin and dip and jump and gavort and finish it off with a laugh and snort. <laughs> Number 9. Maud's Dilemma Maud when Norman Lear created this All in the Family spin-off, it didn't have Archie Bunker's virulent if hilariously wrong-headed bigotry. What it did have was Maud, a New York liberal who gave the word outspoken a whole new meaning. I'm pregnant. <laughs> But this season one episode which found her deciding what to do about a late-in-life pregnancy had enough social relevance and human drama to put the bunkers to shame. In November 1972, Roe vs Wade was months away from being decided by the Supreme Court, but abortion was still a taboo subject on television. When they made it a law, you were for it. Of course, I wasn't pregnant then. <laughs> Mother, it's ridiculous. My saying this to you, we're free. We finally have the right to decide what we can do with our own body. The episode brought it into people's living rooms and made Maud a force to reckon with in the age of politically charged TV comedy. For you, Maud, for me, in the privacy of our own lives, you're doing the right thing. I love you, Walter Finley. Number 8. We Were On A Break – Friends It took a while for Ross and Rachel to kiss, then it took much longer for them to actually commit to each other. A huge part of the reason things delayed so long was this infamous episode. Ross and Rachel get into an argument about her working on their anniversary. I cannot keep having the same fight over and over again, Ross. No, you're, you're, you're making this too hard. Oh, I'm, I'm making this too hard. Okay, what do you want me to do? I don't know. I don't know. Look. Oh, maybe we should just take a break. This disagreement leaves their relationship on shaky ground, leaving Rachel to suggest they take a break. Ross goes out for drinks and ends up spending the night with a woman who works at a copy center. God, and now I just can't stop picturing you with her. I can't. It doesn't matter what you say or what you do, Ross. It's just changed everything. Forever. This throws a wrench in his relationship with Rachel that takes years to fully heal and ultimately makes for one of the show's greatest running jokes. We were on a break! <laughs> oh my God, if you say that one more time, I'm gonna break up with you. Number seven, Dan Harmon's exit. Community. While this didn't technically happen on screen, original writer, creator, and showrunner Dan Harmon's firing was deeply felt once Community returned for its fourth season. <laughs> Despite not being a ratings bonanza, the series had a devoted fanbase who immediately sensed the drop in quality. Any list of the show's worst episodes is full of season 4 entries. This means... Let me guess. War? Let the lady finish her sentence. Thank you, Jeff! War, yeah. Under new leadership, the season saw numerous character betraying storylines, empty retreads of past storylines, and even a reviled episode featuring puppets. What soon became apparent was that Harmon's voice was an essential part of the show. 
things got so dire that he was rehired for the fifth season to get the runaway train back on track. So we need a break. Yeah, our Ferris Bueller needs a day off. Hey, whose dad has a vintage Ferrari? Aw, bad. A pop culture reference is more the same. We need to go big. We need an adventure. Number six, this is the bad place, the good place. When Eleanor Shellstrop finally put together that the show's original premise, that she had been let into a utopian afterlife by mistake, was all wrong, it changed everything. Holy mother forking shirt balls. What? Wow. Okay. <laughs> what we'd come to know as the good place was really the bad place, and Michael, the presumed angel, was actually a demon running a twisted experiment. They're never gonna call a train to take us to the bad place. They can't, because we're already here. This is the bad place. The unraveling of the real story gave way to a sitcom that wasn't about a misanthrope trying to con her way into staying in heaven. It was actually a much deeper and philosophical story about how she could still make amends for her bad behavior and change for the better. You know what, bro? Do your worst. We figured it out once, we can do it again. Because you know what, Michael? Yeah, base. Number five, winning the lottery, Roseanne. It all started out very normal. For eight seasons, the Connors were just a working class Midwestern family trying to make ends meet, and usually they did so by the skin of their teeth. For the number of times I had to salt my food, and eight for the number of parking tickets I got for parking in the ambulance zone, and then four for the number of planets in our solar system. But that tone drastically shifted in the final season. The family wins the lottery and their lives completely change. Some of the storylines are downright surreal. Those are mine. Four. Four is the planets in the solar system. Eight. Eight is parking tickets. And 36. 36 times you salt the food in the... One episode even has Roseanne Connor fight train hijacking terrorists with the help of a Steven Seagal spirit guide. The show made some amends for this betrayal in its original finale, which reveals it was all part of Roseanne's novel. However, it was still a dizzying experience to watch it in real time. But the more I wrote, the more I understood myself and why I had made the choices I made, and that was the real jackpot. Number four, James Senior's death, good times. This Norman Lear sitcom portrayed an African-American family living in a Chicago housing project, showcasing their resilience despite social and economic hardship. However, its increasing focus on the antics of eldest son J.J. Evans made lead actors John Amos and Esther Roll eager for a change. 18 today, happy, bright, narrow man in pure dine, oh my! They eventually got their wish. Amos was fired ahead of the fourth season and his character was killed in an off-screen car accident, making one of TV's most devastating and unfair deaths. We regret to inform you that your husband, James Evans, was killed in an automobile. Oh Roll ultimately quit the show at the end of the season. The departure of these key actors dealt a blow from which good times never fully recovered. Damn, damn, damn! <laughs> Despite lasting two more seasons, the family unit that made the show special was forever altered. Number three, Michael Scott leaves The Office. The regional manager of Dunder Mifflin's Scranton branch started the series in a very different place than he ultimately left it. Michael Scott was introduced as a politically incorrect buffoon, a nuisance, and an enemy to productivity. 9,986,000 minutes, that's how many minutes that you've worked here. Although those traits still remained by the seventh season, both his staff and the viewers had grown to love him that way. After Steve Carell departed and his character relocated to Colorado, it left a big hole in the show's center. It's just that sometimes goodbyes are a bitch. <laughs> T-shirt, they did. Goodbye, stink. Ed Helms's Andy Bernard was a poor substitute for Scott, as was James Spader's Robert California. Critics were not thrilled by the eighth season, and some even flat out suggested that the show should have ended with Scott's departure. Unsurprisingly, The Office ended the next season. Well, Andy, it's been fun. Mm. Mm. Number two, Ellen reveals she's gay. Ellen, 
The now classic and infamous puppy episode won widespread acclaim and became a lightning rod of controversy when Ellen DeGeneres' character, Ellen Morgan, revealed her sexual orientation. Ellen, are you coming out or not? <laughs> yeah, Ellen, quit jerking us around and come out already! <laughs> What is the big deal? I've got a whole hour. This was hot off the heels to Generous doing the same in real life. Ellen, along with guest stars Laura Dern and Oprah Winfrey, received a great deal of backlash for the episode. Has there ever been anyone you felt you clicked with? And what was his name? Susan. In response, ABC began airing a parental advisory before episodes of the otherwise uncontroversial sitcom. Though it generated a lot of publicity, the show's openness with its main character sexuality and perceived turn to a more serious tone ultimately led to its cancellation the next season. See the truth. I mean, be who I am. I'm 35 years old. I'm so afraid to tell people. I mean, I just... Susan... I'm gay. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honourable mentions. Charlie Sheen's firing, Two and a Half Men. Sheen's exit and Ashton Kutcher's entrance totally switched up the show's dynamics. And it's not even mine, it's his. <laughs> you know his? That's my dead brother. Oh. I'm sorry I made you spill him. Med School, Scrubs. A surprise series renewal had the original cast becoming mentors to a new crop of students. You have absolutely no hope of finding a rewarding or satisfying profession in this once noble field. Jodie's substance use disorder becomes fatal. Mum. The very real life and death stakes of sobriety hits home in this season three episode. She was fine at the party. How did this happen? All I know is they found her in the bathroom. Lucy's pregnancy, I love Lucy. The show used its humor to shatter a TV taboo about pregnancy and ratings skyrocketed. Honey, honey no. <laughs> really? <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? Why, you didn't give me a chance. Are you kidding? No. <laughs> it's me! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Lieutenant Colonel Henry Blake is shot down. MASH It was sometimes easy to forget these doctors were in a war zone. MASH 4077 bids Henry Blake a reluctant and affectionate farewell. The jokes were quick, the characters were eccentric, and if that didn't suffice, there was always the laugh track to remind you it was indeed a sitcom. When actor McLean Stevenson left MASH in its third season, his character Lieutenant Colonel Blake was written out. Rather than let him go home, the show walloped us with the news that his helicopter was shot down. It's Bunyan. There were no survivors. The episode closes with the cast stunned silence. Blake's death signalled a shift in tone. The original writers would leave at the end of the next season, and MASH would begin to shift towards more realistic stories of wartime drama. Didn't know that that last page had been written. We were called back, and we learned that in the operating room that the, uh, Henry Blake's uh, helicopter had crashed over the Sea of Japan. So it was a surprise to us, as well as it was to you. What's the most show-altering sitcom moment you remember? Sound off in the comments. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.